everyone. Welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and build update number four of our uh, Revel's 1967 Corvette kit. This is a group build for our uh, Grandpa Mark's Hobbies Facebook group we've been doing. This is January build and it's basically we started in January but finish when you get it done. <laughs> Uh, no, no end line, just because there's so many people doing so much this time of year. Uh, anyhow, we got a ton done, and I'm excited to uh, get you guys back and show you what's got going on. So while I move everybody, um, today was uh, Friday, so naturally it's pizza day, and TJ and Lori sprung for a pizza from Grandpa Mark's uh, Pizza Place right down the road. So... Um, they've done real good, and I got a couple of people here to introduce to you. So let me finish getting everybody out of the way, and maybe we can do it without the Wilhelm screen today. Uh, first off, we have Fireman Doug. Uh, Fireman Doug will come in with Lee every once in a while just to check the place out and see how we're doing. He's a big-time motorhead um, when he's not manning a fire station. Uh, he's also got a couple of questions about something he wants done special here coming up, but we'll talk about that down the road. And then we have Deputy Terry, and she came in with Doug. They, you know, they both work down at the uh, community building, and she comes in. She's a motorhead too, but she keeps everybody in line. <laughs> um, She's real fair, but don't mess with her because she will take you down. Let me move Jake and Daisy, and let's talk about what we got going on with this build right now. So we got the chassis pretty much done here, and I wanted to talk about... Let me grab my finger here. I wanted to talk about the exhaust on this um, because they have you putting the exhaust and everything in before the engine comes in, so the lineup on the two exhaust manifolds can end up being a little bit of a bear sometimes. These stick down pretty good, but what I did and what I found was really simple to do is kind of not follow the directions. Let me bring these up real quick. Here's the directions on this. And what they're saying is um, first drop in your exhaust and then uh, drop down your cover, which, yep, that's what you got to do. And the third thing is bring this into play. Well, that works well and good, and you could probably do that. But what I found is we'll drop in the rear end and sus rear suspension first, get the shocks in there, get all that done, get it nice and neat, do any touch-up painting you have to do, then lay your exhaust in and just... Don't glue it anywhere. Just lay it down in where it's supposed to go and glue in your cross member. That leaves your exhaust free and clear. They can move back and forth and, and give you some wiggle room to play around so that when you get your engine in, you get the engine in, glued in, let it dry, let it solid up and everything, and then go ahead and... Here, let me pull you in just a smidge here, if I can, without getting everybody dizzy. Um... Once the engine's good and dry, I glued right here on both, right, you know, the exhaust to the uh, exhaust manifolds, glued that in, got a good fit, and then I came back to the back, and I worried about getting these glued down and tucked in and everything, and it worked out really, really, really well for me. Um, it was nice to not have to fidget and try to bend the exhaust in place when it, you know, sometimes they just don't line up right, and you can test fit a billion times, but once it goes down and glues, things move just a little bit, and the exhaust to me is always a pain in the behind to try to get just perfect. And I was able to drop those in, they go right on the little pegs, glued down on there, and then go backwards. So that worked out really good. You can see I dirtied the bottom up just a little bit, I used my XF60. I'm really starting to like this. Uh, dark yellow. This is going to probably turn into an interior here sometime really soon. Um, 
I dry brushed this three ways. I started out dry brushing the suspension or the uh, undercarriage with nothing on it. Um, it was just the flat piece. Then I dry brushed the rear suspension. I dry brushed the cross member. And then I dry brushed the front suspension. And doing that in three different stages let me get down underneath everything. And I've talked about this before to where it all looks even. So I just got all this really set to where I want it. Um, haven't done anything with brake lines or fuel lines or anything yet. And I will be doing that. Um, it'll look great. There's not a whole lot because most of it is tucked up underneath in the frame here. Uh, from what I could see, I'd love to have a couple of really, really good pictures from the underside. Uh, <laughs> boy, it'd be nice to have one where it's on the gantry flipped upside down, but I doubt I'll ever find that. Um, the rear end dropped in really nice, no problems at all. The um, drive shaft, I remembered to put it in because I think it would have been a really bear to forget that with this setup because usually I'm, I'm just snipping off ends and tucking it in and bending it. But uh, I had a checklist this time and didn't forget. Um, more about weathering, my springs, I used my metallic gray, which is XF56. Uh, I don't know if it's the right color or not, but I wanted to add a little bit of um, life to the back. It looks a lot more shiny on the screen or on the camera than it does in person. Uh, it's really subdued here, and I'm looking down on my camera right now, and it's just blaring up at you, but it's not that way. My exhaust, I painted flat aluminum, and then I came back with my um, Weathermaster D, and I did this, this is the first time I've done this. I used the Weathermaster D oil stain on it really, really super light, and just kind of brushed it back and forth really light, and I mean really light, and I let that sit and then doing other things, and I came back and I thought, you know what, that's just, it's not metal enough, because it kind of took that metal look away from it, but when I touched this with panel liner, because I wanted to do the panel liners around the edges here and, you know, on the mufflers, when I did that, it kind of spread out a little bit, and I was like, wow, that looks really good. And I literally painted the entire exhaust system with panel liner, real light. And I mean, I dipped it and wiped it off and dipped it and wiped it off. So it wasn't a whole lot of the, the black. It was more just the, uh, a hint of it. And I did the whole exhaust with that. And I like how it looks. Um, I'm going to even try to pick this up and bring it closer. Maybe it'll focus in and you can see a little better than that far away and the camera might do a little better job of it, but I like how that came out. Um, I will be doing that for now on. The front, this is just flat aluminum on the sway bar. On the linkage, I did a little flat aluminum just to give it a little life. I did the bolts, and then I dry brushed it. I may come back and dry brush right here across the top a little bit more, but I might not. I'm, I'm debating on that. But that's the underside, and again, it went down really well. I did have a little bit of uh, smudgings with the springs. That was all my own fault. And then I was trying to, I glued them in. And I, now they're, the springs aren't actually glued on. The only thing that's holding my front suspension on is right across the front, the two ribs right here. I glued it to that. It glued in nice and smooth and tight. So I didn't have to worry about it. This, I just, my sway bar, I just glued down to the front. And my phone is getting blown up right now. Um, but I just glued it down here and let it sit. And then this came down and actually pushed down on top and closed that gap up nicely. So <laughs> I tried to glue the springs in. And for some reason, they got cattywampus just a little tiny bit. And it threw the front end off where it didn't want to lay flat. So 
I've taken the front end back off and somehow I just messed up and all of a sudden the springs went flying. Oh, I was trying to take one of the springs off and the both springs went flying. The side, um, the window wall went flying, the batteries laying, and I couldn't find one of the springs to save my behind. I'm crawling on the floor underneath my desk with my phone with a flashlight on. I couldn't find it. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to just have to make a spring. It is what it is. So I sit down, I put my visor back on, and I look over and look at where my spring was. Here's a picture. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I got lucky finding it, seeing it there, because usually I would have you know, made a spring, glued it all up, and then looked over and found that. So I got lucky tonight with that. It could have flown a million miles away, but it ended up right on that white spoon where I sat down and I looked at it, and it showed up. So I got lucky there. Let's flip this thing over, and we'll talk about the... Uh, putting this part of it together, the fenders, the radiator, um, and everything else. Um, I was showing you the engine the other day, and I went upstairs, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, it's just bugging me. I couldn't figure out what the heck it was. Here, I put my um, uh, carb on upside down. And I, I, somebody actually made a comment in the comments, and I appreciate those, uh, saying, hey, your carb's backwards. And I was like, that was it. <laughs> well, it's a little late now to try to pull that thing apart because I would just destroy all this work. And I'm going to glue the air cleaner down on top of it anyhow. Um, so it's going to be hidden pretty much. You'll be able to see the springs and things like that. And the hose is going under there. But you won't be able to see that I jacked the carb up backwards. <laughs> but I appreciate the comments saying the carb's on backwards. I also had comments about my um, alternator fan blade uh, or pulley supposed to be black. The alternator wire is supposed to come up front here and over. Um, and I kind of knew that, but I didn't want to do that because I did all the work getting the temperature sensor put in there, the wire put in there, and I kind of wanted to show it off, but it kind of got buried anyhow, so I should have done it the right way. Um, and a lot of good information. I got a lot of great information on here, like the uh, distributor shroud and the, the wires. I noticed on the, the, uh, um, the pictures that I've been looking on online, that all the spark plug wires were shielded wires, and they actually were grounded to the valve covers. The, the shielding actually came up and went back down to each one right down near the spark plug, um, grounded right to the, the valve cover. And I didn't have a clue. I'm like, well, that's interesting, but what the heck? Well, somebody, I can't remember if it was on my uh, Grandpa Mark's Hobbies Facebook page, or no, it was on the Facebook page, uh, made mention that all of that is done because this has an AM FM radio in it. And if they didn't do all the shielded wires and shielding and everything, it would pick up nothing but static. So that's pretty cool. And I, I wish I could remember who it was that put that in there. You know who you were and thank you very much because it was kind of bugging me. And I'm sure a lot of other people would like to know that. That's why I'm throwing it out here. I wish I could remember who you were, uh, and I know I could go back there and look, um, but yeah, that that was really cool, and I love information like that. But anyhow, let's get back to this build. The fender wells dropped in there pretty good for me. They lined up nicely. The battery was kind of a little funky, just the way it is in there. Um, I had trouble with it laying flat this way. I had to sand and do some stuff just to get it to square up. Um, the radiator dropped in great. The lower radiator hose, I found, I super glued it onto the radiator just before I brought the radiator up in place with my Max Cure. And this says it's 10 to 25 seconds, and it's not kidding. <laughs> but that gave me... 10 to 25 seconds after doing 15 or 20 
uh, dry fits, just dry runs, just making sure that I could get this radiator to lay where it's supposed to. And then I glued that on. I dropped the radiator in, got it glued in, flipped this thing over, and with a uh, toothpick, I was able to fuss around until the lower radiator hose got in there pretty darn good. Um, that little gap will be hidden because I'm going to have a uh, heater hose come right out over the top of it. And then the other heater hose over here coming out and around. So I did that. Um, the last update, I didn't have the little uh, heater hose or water hose going from the intake down to the, the pump. This did have a little stub coming out, a little plastic stub, but it looked horrible. Which is amazing because of the great detail in this kit. So I cut that off, drilled it in, and then I just dropped a piece of my um, solder in there that I painted black. It's going to be the same solder that I'm using for the uh, um, heater hose. So I just cut a little little pinch of it off, bent it with a over a, a uh, tip of a toothpick, glued it in, and it looks a lot better. Um, my windshield washer bottle. I'm I'm really starting to be happy with the way the paint is looking on my washer bottles. It's it's been a long road for those and I've you know just never really liked the way they look and now I am. I'm I'm really happy with the way that that blue color is and what that is is a mix of my Tamiya's flat white XF2 and my sky blue, which is XF or X14. I love this, comes in handy for a lot of things. But a couple of drops here, a couple of drops there, mix it around until it looks like uh, radiator fluid, put it on there, and good to go. I have um, the hose to go from the radiator or the uh, radiator. I did say radiator. This is windshield washer. <laughs> not radiator, but I have a little hose that goes from the windshield washer bottle around and it's going to go around to the front of the firewall. So, but all in all, everything came out really good. It, it all went in there very nice. Even the decal for the, the heater hoses, I put it on there and it went whoosh, and went right around them. And that never happens for me. So I'm, I'm good with that all the way happy. Um, now that you can see it a little bit, my drive shaft, I painted it with my uh, semi-gloss X18, semi-gloss black, and then I rubbed it down with the gunmetal from the Tamiya's Weathermaster C, just to give it a little bit of life. I mean, I know colors aren't going to be correct on everything I do on these kits. Uh, I try to get pretty close but on other things, I try to look at it and say, you know what, this is just all black. And and I want to make it to where some things stand out. That's why I do that. Um, but if it's blatant and, and you see something, just smack me and say, hey, that really looks horrible. <laughs> and it even like stuff like this, I can come back in there and repaint it. Um, you know, if it really if it really drives me crazy. I've done that before. I know the nuts and bolts and everything don't show up, but it just gives a little bit of interest in there. So, oh, and I found my uh, oil filler, or my oil filter. It was still attached to the sprue, just in a real uh, weird place. I'm still happy I did the, use the white one that I made. Um, but it, it, I did find it. I didn't lose it. I didn't go crazy. So let's move this out of the way for a second. And I want to talk about my rims. And I'm going to bring this up. I was having a real good paint day yesterday. And I took my uh, titanium silver X32. And I painted where the steely part of the tire should be. And I, I'm really happy with that. I mean, I know that should be more of a silvery look, but 
dang it, did that come out good? I didn't want the flat aluminum in there because it just, I've done that before and it just kind of seems to disappear or not disappear, but kind of overpowers the chrome where I've looked at these things before and it's like the chrome shines across the, uh, the, the steel or the aluminum color paint that's on the, on the real ones. And you can almost not tell where Chrome is and where the, uh, the hubcap and the ring, the beauty ring is. And that's why I went with that color and I'm really, really happy with it. And I am still super stoked about the red lines. <laughs> so, uh, it was a good day yesterday for, for detail painting. I came in and the last thing, and I will let you go. Well, not the last thing. I got one more thing, but I got my uh, brake assembly glued on. Again, I was told that the little bars that go across the top shouldn't be the gold color like I had them painted. It should be um, a silver. So I came back and I just took my gel pen and went right across the top of it, made it right. And it only took me a half a second. And thank you again for the heads up on that. The hoses or the, the uh, brake lines is just my, um, my small solder, my 0.03 millimeter solder. Just wrapped it around a toothpick tip, bent it a couple of times, and then, you know, cut it and let it run long. I cut it back this way. And basically, all that is is a Hollywood. I call it a Hollywood um, thing because when this is put up against this, that disappears and it doesn't tangle up with anything. And that's why I do that. I'm, you know, I know it's got to go around and underneath the engine and all that. But in order to do that, you're just destroying. You know, these hoses will get so goobered up that they'll never look right again. So if you could just cut them back to where they disappear, where there's, you know, you look around and you can't see them anymore behind the engine, um, that's good. And then you can pick up underneath here and run them where they need to go. So I still got a black stripe on here. That's my dipstick. I got to repaint that. I didn't even see that until I mounted the engine. I wasn't even thinking. So... But there is that. I also came in here um, with a little bit of gray panel liner and dropped it in here and around and let it go up on the wires. Um, use a black panel liner on the uh, windshield wiper and came around with a gray and did here and there. And this is my gray. I don't use it enough. My panel, it's just dark gray. And I, I should use it more than I do because it, you know, it, it does like on the wires. It really, um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that in the camera, but in person, it really made them look like the um, black rubber or the black wrapping that goes on the wire wraps. So I'm really happy with that. So there is that. Um, last thing I want to say, and then I'll let you all go, is... I've been getting a ton of shop cards, bunch of them. And I want to thank everybody for the shop cards. I really do. And I'm sending out mine as soon as I can. Um, when you ask it, usually I'll do a bunch of like five or 10 of them as the requests come in and they get sent out. I want to take all my shop cards. I even got a Christmas card in there that I want to do a quick video on this weekend you know, just to thank you and everybody and show everybody these awesome shop cards. They are so cool. Um, but that'll be this weekend. Maybe the beginning of next week, I'll be able to get it posted. And uh, I'm hoping to get this build done this week because Deputy Terry needs to get her police car going. So uh, with that, I will let you go. Thank you very much for watching. All the kind words, the comments, and everything. Um, don't feel like I'm going to be upset when you say, Hey dummy, this doesn't look right because I won't, I'll appreciate it. Uh, with that, I'll let you go. Y'all have a great day and a better tomorrow. Thank you for watching.